Hello, my name is Bella, and I'm going to be reading you a book called Skippy John Jones. Lost in Spice by Judy Scottner. Let's get reading. Skippy John Jones was nuts about Mars. Because it was the red planet. I love red, that's what I said. And I musty put some rusty in my big boy head. So off he went to the kitchen where Mama and the girls were starting a supper. Supper is dinner, if you didn't know that. We're making tuna poodle casserole, crooned his little sister, Jilly Boo Jones. Tuna noodle casserole, corrected Mama. A poodle is a dog, and we don't eat dogs. Skippy John thinks he's a dog, said Jizzable Bill. Yeah, agreed Jujubee. He thinks he's a chew wow wow. Because his ears are too big for his, his head, added Jezebel. That's enough, scolded Mama. Pinkie Pie's ears are just fine. But Pinkie Pie was oblivious to their chatter. See, Skippy John Jones is getting bullied by his siblings, his brothers and sisters. So, may I please borrow your bottles of red spice, Mama? He asked politely. Yes, you may, replied Mama, pleased with her boy's manners. But you better not be thinking of doing any sprinkling. Nuh-uh, said Skippy, blinking. Or tasting, pasting, or wasting. If you know what is good for you, she added. Well, Skippy John Jones always knew what was good for him. He's putting spicy red sauce on his bed. I think that's a good thing to do. And that was bouncing and pouncing and rocketing in the rusty red dust. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I'm in a big race to be the first dog to bounce into space. Then a bit of the spice tickled his nose, and... ah ka chui The kitty boy sneezed. Holy hot tamales, exclaimed Skippy John Jones as he shot past his reflection. What's up with that doggy in the mirror? Then, using his very best Spanish accent, he said, You're not a Siamese cat, dude. You're a wicked red chihuahua. And quicker than you can say, jumping jacks on Jupiter, the kitty boy found his mask and cape, a mirror, a marble, and a stock monkey. He stuffed these and a few other things into his space suit while he sang in a moy moy soft voice. My name is Skippito Frisquito. And I think there are Martian Peritos. Clap, clap. Some say the green creatures share all of my features. I hope it's not just Fabolitos. Clap, clap. Get him. He's got, he's using a jacket as a spacesuit. He's using his imagination. And there's the doggy in the mirror.
right there. Back in the kitchen, the girls were being a big help to Mama Junebug Jones. I love noodles, declared Jilly Boo. Noodles are silly, said Jezebel. That's because they're nude, said Jujube. They're not nude, said Jilly Boo, giggling. They're naked, and she tossed one up to the ceiling where it stuck. But Skippy John Jones wasn't stuck at all. He was suited up and ready for liftoff. The astronaut Ido took one small step into his closet for chihuahuas. And one giant leap into the universe for lust. Chimichangos. He was well in his orbit when a comet covered in crazies cruised by. Who goes there? hollered Skippito. Martian, came the answer. Martian who? Martian to your closet and get us some free joles, dude, said the voice. Poquito Tito, exclaimed Skippito. Is that you, amigo? See, it is all of us, los chimichangos, said Poquito Tito, the smallest of the small ones. We are going to build a chili pole, a chili polvo pipeline from Mars to Earth, Pepito. Not the chili powder pipeline, declared Skippito. Exoscatamente, how the doggies poor cute, asked Skippito. Because amigo, began Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. The chili powder on Mars is muy caliente and it will help keep us very warm in el inverno i'm not that very good at pronouncing spanish but if you are you feel you can feel free to correct me then off they zoomed chihuahuas and then there yes on The Coco Comet and the Kitty Boy made it to Mars with a soft landing. Ooh, sighed Don Diego. That felt marvelous. Then he turned to glance at Skippito. No offense, Poco Coco, but why the suit de la Neve? asked Don Diego. It's not a snow suit, declared Skippito. It's a space suit. Dude, you don't need a space seat up here, said Poquito Tito. You need a spice suit. Mars is covered in the chili powder, Chico. This made the perros go loco in the rojo singing. Chiliru, chiliri, chilirito, clap, clap. It's a wag of the tail for Skippito, clap, clap. For there's nothing as nice as a roll in hot spice in the light of the Martian moonitos. Clap, clap. You guys like this book so far? But a roll in the rojo should have been a no-no because quicker than can you say, 
monkeys making meatballs. Skippy rolled and rolled and rolled in the opposite direction from his pipeline, Puchitos. Woo! said Skippy Doe, panting. You boys are right. This bicito is hot. The astronaut Tito was so collar under the collar that he just had to take off his space suit. What do you guys think will happen after he takes off his space suit? You can breathe in, breathe in the spice, because spice is spicy. called out. There was no answer. Uh-oh, Skippy just said to himself. I'm lost in spice. But the astronaut Tito did not panic. He grabbed his binoculars and climbed up on Uroka. And that's when he saw it. Holy green gorillas! Gulped Skippy Edo. It's a Martian Edo. A Martian Edo. Have you ever heard of that? The Puchito announced just a skirt away from the unearthly creature. I guess I think it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's the book is like this now. Let's read the top part first. Dude, dude, your ears are too big for your head. Your ears are too big for your head. Your head is too big for your body. Your head is too big for your body. You're not a Martian. You're not a Martian. No, I know I'm not a Martian, dude, said Skippito. I'm a Chihuahua, just like you. So he found a little twin. Cute. Back to two pages. To prove his point, Skippito ran back to his spacesuit and pulled out the little Rojo mirror he had packed. See the mirror? Look, said Skippito, holding it up so both their faces showed. We are twins. The Martian was so mesmerized that he could not take his Uno Ojo off himself. Skippito was so excited that he could not stop hopping and flapping his arms. Then all of a sudden, he remembered that he was lost. Hey, come on, Uno Ojo, called the kitty boy. We gotta find Miss Amigos. But Uno Ojo said nada. He simply sat and stared at his image in the mirror. Okie dokie do, said Skippito. I'll go, but you have to keep your eye on my stuff, especially my sock monkey. They took off faster than a tilly wink in a tornado. See, they're exactly the same. And he's leaving him in charge of everything. What's going to happen next? He didn't have to go far. In less time than it takes to tickle up a termite, Skippito found his cucuritos cooped up inside crater. Dudes, shouted Skippito. Dude, whispered Don Diego. You were just in a tempo. In time for what? Skippito asked. Umbrace de la Marte, said Bukito Tito with a silver Edo. Not the men from Mars, declared Skippito. The mere mention of Martians made the muchachos go mad. Knock, knock. Who goes there? Verde Martians everywhere. Slurping sloppy ice cream cones. Speeding in the spicy zones. Mossy Martians on the move. What do they think they have to prove? We did not come here for a fight. We want to build. We will not bite. 
Then Skipita felt the fur stand up on the back of his neck. Are those aliens? <laughs> because the critter's crater was about to have seen so crazy creatures for company. Holy hoopla heads, hollered Skipito. Here they come. Before Skipito could think what to do, the Verde visitors piled out of their space buggy, burying all of Skipito's stuff. Two were green and mossy, while the third was green and bossy. The fourth was green and funky, and the fifth was green and... What do you think the fifth is? Monkey! yelled Skippy. That's my sock monkey! Sock monkey. Dito! declared Skippy's one eyed Martian twin emerging from the green group before him. Without saying another palabra, Skippy picked up his monkey's paw and pulled. First, Skippito yanked it this way. Then, Uno Ojo yanked it that way. It's Tugo Monkito, cheered the Chimachangos. On the count of three, the Pepitos planned to pull Tembane. But as the doggy shouted, Uno, the Martians hollered. Ojo! And, uh-oh! Uno Ojo let out a go-go. Sending the kitty boy flying. I guess what's gonna happen next. <laughs> Skippito and his sock monkey hurtled head first back to earth and out through his closet door. Kaboom! He hollered breaking the sound barrier and maybe his head. Skippy John Jones, exclaimed Mama, rushing into his room. What on earth are you doing? The kitty boy stood up and shook off a cloud of red spice. I didn't do anything on earth, Mama, replied Skippy John. I did everything on Mars. <clears throat> oh, that's terrific, Major Tom, said Mama. Then she straightened the kitty boy's ears. You must be so Starving. Do you think he's starving? I think he's starving for some food. <laughs> Later that night, the kitty boy looked up at the starry night starry sky. Mars, he muttered, beginning to bounce. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones. Oh, I'm, I am that. And I like my red jammies because they're made from the wool of green Martian lammies. Stop bouncing, Pinkie Pie, scolded Mama. I'm not pink, I'm red, said Skippy. It's over, Red Rover, said Mama. Just go to sleep. And that's exactly what Skippy John Jones did. <laughs> the end. Did you guys like that story? Now make sure to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Bye!